Thank you for joining us as we continue to study the book of Numbers. I'm David and Raga will be translating. In this session, we'll be using curriculum mainly developed and originally presented by YWAM SPS's Connie Haydner. Let's take a moment to review where we are in this fascinating book. So far, we've explored the introduction to the book of Numbers. And we've looked at their out. We've looked at the significance of the actual numbers in the book. We've resolved some potential questions about those numbers. And we've also looked at the problem of the Israelites complaining. In this session, we'll be looking at two people who were significant in the book of Numbers. Balaam and Balak. As we begin our examination of these two historical figures, Balaam and Balak, please keep in mind three questions. What or whom is God able to use for his purposes? Are fortune tellers or witch doctors to be respected or even feared? What happens when we try to manipulate God? We'll be reading through the scripture in Numbers about these two men. Stopping occasionally to consider what the events of their relationship mean to us today. Let's start the historical narrative from Numbers 22, verse 1. Then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan at Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was in great dread of the people because they were many. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak the son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the people of Amal, to call him, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt, they cover the face of the earth, and they are dwelling opposite me. ابن بعور إلى فرطور التي على النهر في أرض بني شعبه ليرهم قائلا هو هذا شعب شعب خرج من مصر هو هذا قد غش وجه الأرض وهو مقيم مقابلي. بلعم means devourer, swallower up. بلعم معنى اسم بلعم الملتهم أو المبتلى. His father's name Beor means destroyer or burner. واسم أبوه هو بعور يعني المدمر أو المحرق. So in Numbers 22, we continue to read. Come now, curse this people for me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. 
لعله يمكن ان نكسره فاطرده من الارض لاني عرفت ان الذي تباركه مبارك والذي تلعنه ملعون فانطلق شيوخ مؤاب وشيوخ مديان وحلوان العراق في ايديهم واتوا الى بلعام وكلموه بكلام بلق So the problem was that Balak, king of Moab, and the Midianites were afraid of Israel. And to solve this problem, they hired Balaam from Pethor on the Euphrates, the river in the land of Ammon, which is in northern Syria. And it's interesting the background of this whole story in Numbers. At that time, soothsaying was a common practice. Kings would ask a soothsayer about their military future, whether they could win battles or not. And they would have to pay the soothsayer money. And as we see in Numbers 22, 7 and then verses 16 to 18, messengers did come to Belaim with fees of divination. بنشوف هنا في في سفر العدد 22 7 و 6 18 انه جاء رسل بلاق الى بلعام باجره العرافه اللي هي بيسميها في الكتاب حلوان العرافه في ايديها. So here's what the line told them. ده بقى اللي بلعام رد بيه عليهم. Lodge here tonight and I will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the princes of Moab stayed with Belaim and God came to Belaim and said who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt, and it covers the face of the earth. Now come, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. فقال بالعام الله بالاق بن صفور ملك مؤاب قد أرسل إلي يقول هو هذا الشعب الخارج من مصر قد غش وجه الأرض تعال الآن إلى عندي إياه لعلي أقدر أن أحاربه وأطرده. God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. فقال الله لبلعام لا تذهب معهم ولا تلعن الشعب لأنه مبارك فقام بلعام صباحا وقال رؤساء بلاق انطلقوا إلى أرضكم لأن الرب أبى أن يسمح لي بالذهاب معكم فقام رؤساء مؤاب وأتوا إلى بلاق وقالوا أبى بلعام أن يأتي, يأتي معنا Once again, Balak sent princes, more in number and more honorable than these and they came to Balaam and said to him Thus says Balak the son of Zippor let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I surely will do you great honor, and whatever you say to me, I will do. Come, curse this people for me. فعد بلاق وأرسل أيضا رؤساء أكثر وأعظم من أولئك، فأتوا إلى بلعام وقالوا له: هكذا قال بلاق بن صفور: لا تمتنع عن الإتيان إلى إلي، لأني أكرمك إكراما عظيما، وكل ما تقول لي أفعله، فتعال الآن إلعن لي هذا الشعب. But Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. So you too, please stay here tonight, that I may know more what the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise, go with them, but only do what I tell you. ولا لا أقدر أن أتجاوز قول الرب إلهي لأعمل صغيرا أو كبيرا الآن انكسوا هنا أنتم أيضا هذه الليلة لأعلم ماذا يعود الرب يكلمني به فأتى الله إلى بلعام ليلا وقال له إن أتى الرجال ليدعوك فقم اذهب معهم إنما تعمل الأمر الذي أكلمك به فقط At first reading, Belaim seems to be a man of God في الرأي الأولى لما نحن نقرأ قصة نحس أن كأن بلعام يعني رجل الله أو he is dedicated. He 
he calls God the Lord my God. He refuses to go back with the elders twice because of his obedience to God. He seems diligent to inquire of God. He's confident in hearing God's voice and speaking his word only. So at first we would think that Balaam is a prophet of God. Although a little bit perverted by money and power. But let's see how his story plays out before we determine who he is in his relationship with God. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. فقام بالعام صباحا وشد على أتاني وانطلق مع رؤساء مؤاب فحمى غضب الله لأنه منطلق ووقف ملاك الرب في الطريق لقومه وهو راكب على أتاني وغلامي وغلاماه معه Remember that God actually told Belaim in verse 20 افتكروا أن الله قال لبلعام في عدد 20 If the men have come to call you rise, go with them but only do what I tell you so why is he now angry with Belaim for going with them? So let's keep two things in mind. Just because God permits us to do something that we want to do doesn't mean it's not sin and does not make him angry. Secondly, wicked plans against his people anger God. He hates evil and loves his people. So his anger is because of his great love for his people. As we continue reading in Numbers 22, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. فأبصرت الأتان ملاك الرب واقفة في الطريق وسيفه مسدود في يده. فمالت الأتان على الطريق عن الطريق ومشت الحق. فضرب بالعام الأتان ليردها إلى الطريق ثم وقف ملاك الرب في خندق للكروم له حائط من هنا وحائط من هناك And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord she pushed against the wall and pressed the lion's foot against the wall so he struck her again Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord she lay down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you've struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you've made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand, for then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you've ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he said, No. فقال بالعام للأتان لأنك لأنك درايت بي لو كان في يدي سيف لكنت الآن قد قد قتلتك فقالت الأتان لبلعام ألست أنا أتانك التي ركبت عليها منذ وجودك إلى هذا اليوم هل تعودت أن أفعل بك هكذا فقال لا. At this point, it may be helpful to understand how diviners or soothsayers often work. 
دلوقتي عند النقطه دي نقدر نفكر ونشوف ازاي الناس اللي هم العرافين والناس اللي بيقولوا بيقولوا الطالع الموضوع بيمشي معاهم Soothsaying was an attempt to gain secret knowledge by interpreting signs or omens. العرافين هم كانوا بيحاولوا او العرافه يعني هي محاوله الحصول على معرفه سريه عن طريق تفسير العلامات وقراءه الطالع. We'll see a bit later on in Numbers chapter 24 that Balaam usually looked for omens but eventually gave up when he tried to curse Israel. بنشوف بعد شويه في سفر على 24 انه بلعان كان دايما يبحث عن الطالع لكن هو في الاخر استسلم لانه ما قدرش يلعن الشعب الاسرائيلي. And as we look at how this donkey is acting, it's interesting to note these magicians would tell the future by looking at an animal's liver or the flight of birds or unnatural behavior in animals. لما نشوف قصه الحمار دي ونشوف كمان التاريخ ونشوف ان العرافين كانوا بيتنبؤوا بالمستقبل عن طريق فحص كبده حيوان او او طريق طريقه طير معين بطريقه معينه او سلوكيات غير طبيعيه للحيوانات بنشوف ان دي كانت حاجه شيقه that sense of humor and symbolism is fun to read here هنا الله كان يعني زي بيقدم حاجات يسخر بيها من بلعام ومن الشخص اللي هو عايز يخلي بلعام يلعن شعب اسرائيل It's as if he's saying, "Are you so stupid, Balaam?" كأن ربنا عايز يقول له أنت غبي جدا كده يا بلعام. Even a donkey will listen to me. إنه الحمار بيسمع ليا. God even has the donkey talk to Balaam. الله خلى الحمار يتكلم لبلعام. It's as if he has to have the donkey tell him, "Do I have to tell you myself what's going on here?" وكأن عايز الحمار يقول له هل أنت مستنيني أنا أقول لك إيه اللي بيحصل؟ Also, remember how soothsayers relied on subtle signs from animals? كمان افتكروا ان العرافين كانوا بيعتمدوا في القرارات بتاعتهم على علامات خفيه وممكن تبقى جايه من الحيوانات. So this is not a subtle sign from the donkey. فدي ما كانتش حاجه من العلامات الخفيه. And his behavior takes on a more humorous meaning with this understanding. لانه كان بيتكلم بشكل واضح و زي تصرفاته كانت بيسخر من فهم الانسان وكانه بيقول انا بفهم اكتر منك God has a sense of humor even when he's protecting his people and he's correcting someone الله ساعات بيبقى عنده زي خفه دم او بيحب ان هو يسخر من الانسان ساعات عشان يوصل له فكره معينه او يخليه يفهم حاجه معينه So as we continue reading in numbers 22 دلوقتي هنكمل قرايه في سفر العدد اصحاح 22 Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside for me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. ثم كشف الرب عن عيني بلعام فأبصر ملاك الرب واقفا في الطريق وسيفه مسدود في يده فخر ساجدا على وجهه فقال له ملاك الرب لماذا ضربت أتانك الآن ثلاث دفعات ها أنا ذا قد خرجت للمقاومة لأن الطريق ورطة أمامي فأبصرتني الآتان وملت من قدامي الآن ثلاث دفعات ولو لم تمل من قدامي لكنت الآن قد قتلتك واستبقيتها Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went on with the princes of Balak. فقال بالعام لملاك الرب أخطأت إني لم أعلم أنك واقف تلقاء في الطريق والآن إن قبح في عينيك فإني أرجع فقال ملاك الرب لبلعام اذهب مع الرجال وانما تتكلم بالكلام الذي اكلمك به فقط فانطلق When Balak heard that Balaam had come he went out to meet him at the city of Moab on the border formed by the Arnon at the extremity of the border and Balak said to Balaam Did I not send to you to call you why did you not come to me am I not able to honor you Balaam said to Balak Behold I have come to you have I now any power of my own to speak anything The word that God puts in my mouth, that must I speak. 
فلما سمع بلاق أن بلعام جاء خرج لاستقباله إلى مدينة مؤاب التي على تخم أرنون الذي في أقصى التخوم فقال بلاق لبلعام ألم أرسل إليك لأدعوك لماذا لم تأتي إلي حقا لا أقدر أن أكرمك فقال بلعام لبلاق أنا إذا قد جئت إليك لعلي لأن أستطيع أن أتكلم بشيء الكلام الذي يضعه الله في فمي بها أتكلم From the text, we see that Balaam was famous for his cursing and blessing. But we know from Genesis 12, verse 3, and chapter 27, verse 29, the covenant blessing, only God has power to curse or bless. So in Numbers 22, verse 6, we see this very specifically said of Balaam. Balak says, Come now, curse this people for me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. فالآن تعالى ولا عن لي هذا الشعب لأنه أعظم مني لعله يمكن أن نكسره وأطرده من الأرض لأني عرفت أن الذي تباركه مبارك وليس لعنه ملعون Yet God proves that he is more powerful than the reputation of a mere man لكن الله هنا بيثبت أنه هو أعظم وأقوى من السمعة بتاعة شخص شخص زي يعني بشر ما عندوش أي قوة Then Belaim went with Balak and they came to Kiriath Huzah and Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep and sent for Balaam and the princes who were with him. And in the morning, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal, and from there he saw a fraction of the people. Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said. And Balak and Balaam offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And Balaam said to Balak, Stand beside your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me I will tell you. And he went to a bare height, and God met Balaam. <laughs> وأصعد بلاق وبلعام ثورا وكبشا على كل مذبح فقال بلعام لبلاق قف عند محرقتك فانطلق فانطلق أنا لعل الرب وافي للقائي فمهما أراني أخبرك به ثم انطلق إلى ربيع فوافى الله بلعام And Belaim said to him I've arranged the seven altars and I've offered on each altar a bull and a ram and the Lord put a word in Belaim's mouth and said Return to Belak and thus you shall speak and he returned to him, and behold, he and all the princes of Moab were standing beside his burnt offering. So what's wrong with their offering? We would think they're giving an offering to God, so shouldn't that be something that pleases him? Well, it doesn't please him for two reasons. Matthew Henry reminds us they were attempting to bribe God. God is the creator and owner of everything, so what could they possibly give him that he doesn't already possess? الله هو خالق ومالك كل شيء فهم يدروا إيه يعني هو مش عنده هو عنده هو يملك كل شيء. Secondly and most importantly they had no relationship with God. تاني حاجة والأهم إن هو ما كانش عندهم أي علاقة مع الله. It's not an offering if there's not a relationship behind it. ما فيش أي تقدمة هترضي الله إذا ما كانش في علاقة خلف التقدمة دي. So in his dealings with them, God shows them that this offering is not something that will please him. فالله وراءه من التقدمة دي مش هترضي ومش so we read on in Numbers 23. And Balaam took up his discourse and said, From Aram, Balak has brought me, the king of Moab, from the eastern mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. 
How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Behold, a people dwelling alone and not counting itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. فرنتق بمثلي وقال من أرام أتى بي بلاق ملك مؤاب من جبال المشرق تعال إلى عن لي يعقوب وهلوما أشتم إسرائيل كيف ألعن من لم يلعنه الله وكيف أشتم من لم يشتمه الرب إن من رأس السخور أراه ومن الأكام أبصره وذا الشعب يسكن وحده وبين الشعوب لا يحسب من أحصى تراب يعقوب وربع إسرائيل بعدد لتموت نفسي موت الأبرار ولتكن آخرتي كآخرتهم and Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you've done nothing but bless them. And he answered and said, Must I not take care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? And Balak said to him, Please, come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only a fraction of them, and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. And he took him to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. فقال بلاق لبلعام ماذا فعلت بي لتشتم أعدائي أخستك وهوذا أنت قد باركتهم فأجاب وقال أما الذي يضعه الرب في فمي أحترس أن أتكلم به فقال له بلاق هلما معي إذا ما كان أقر تراه منه إنما ترى أقصاؤه فقط وكله لا ترى, لا ترى فلعنه لي من هناك فأخذه إلى حقل سوفيم إلى رأس الفزجة وبنى سبعة مزابح وأصعد صورا وكبشا على كل مزبح So we can see that Balaam still hasn't learned that no matter how impressive they may seem Insincere offerings are offensive to God. Elijah said to Balak, Stand here beside your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. And the Lord met the lion and put a word in his mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus shall you speak. And he came to him, and behold, he was standing beside his burnt offering with the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? فقال لبلاق قف هنا عند محرقتك وأنا أوافي هناك فوافى الرب بالعام ووضع كلام في فهم وقال ارجع إلى بلاق وتكلم هكذا فأتى إليه وإذا وهو وقف عند محرقتي ورؤساء مؤاب معه فقال له بلاق ماذا تكلم به الرب and Balaam took up his discourse and said, Rise, Balak, and hear, give ear to me, O son of Zippor. God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Behold, I received the command to bless, he has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord their God is with them, and the shout of the king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt and is for them like the horns of the wild ox. For there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, What has God wrought? لم يبصر إثما في عقوب ولا رأى تعبا في إسرائيل. الرب إله معه وهتاف ملك فيه الله أقربه من مصر له مثل سرعة الرئب إنه ليس عيافة على يعقوب ولا عرافة على إسرائيل في الوقت يقال في الوقت يقال عن يعقوب وعن إسرائيل ما فعل الله The people as a lioness it rises up and as a lion it lifts itself it does not lie down until it has devoured the prey and drunk the blood of the slain and Balak said to Balaam do not curse them at all and do not bless them at all وهذا شعب يقوم كلبوة ويتفع كأسد لا ينام حتى يأكل فريسة ويشرب دم قتلة فقال بلقب بالعام لا تلعنه لعنة ولا تباركه بربا Lion answered Balak Did I not tell you all that the Lord says I must do? And Balak said to Balaam Come now, I will take you to another place Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor which overlooks the desert فأجابة بلعام وقال لبلاق ألم أكلمك قائلا كل ما يتكلم به الرب فإياه أفعل فقال بلاق لبلعام هل هم أخذك إلى مكان أفضل عسى أن يصلح في عناية الله أن تلعنه لي من هناك فأخذ بلاق بلعام إلى رأس فغول 
المرشد الفعلوان في البرية. بلاك and بلايم still aren't learning their lesson, are they? لغاية دلوقتي بلاك وبلايم مش عارفين يتعلموا الدرس. بلايم said to بلاك, build for me here seven altars and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. So, yet again, Balaam doesn't understand his offerings are useless. When the Lime saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go, as at other times, to look for omens, but set his face toward the wilderness. So at this point, Balaam is realizing he can't depend on omens that only God can take charge. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he took up his discourse and said, the oracle of Belaim the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. The line boasts of his role, even though God is choosing to use him. Balak is even paying for the offerings, not him. Here's what the line speaks out, again, against his will. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch afar, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. <laughs> ويكون زرعه على مياه غزيرة ويتسامى ملكه على أجاج وترتفع مملكته. He brings him out of Egypt and is for him like the horns of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down like a lion and like a lioness. Who will rouse him up? Blessed are those who bless you and cursed are those who curse you. الله أخرجه من مصر له مثل سرعة الرئم يأكل أمما مضيقيه ويقدم عظامه ويحطم سهامي سهامي جثم كأسد ربض كلبوة من يقيمه مبارك مباركك مبارك ولا عينك ملعون. So let's look again at verse nine. خلنا نبص على عدد تسعة. Blessed are those who bless you and cursed are those who curse you. مبارك مبارك ولا عينك ملعون. The lion tries to curse Israel, but instead, God has him proclaim his own punishment for trying to curse Israel. And how does Balak? And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee to your own place. I said, I will certainly honor you, but the Lord has held you back from honor. <laughs> قلت أكرمك إكراما وهو الرب قد منعك عن الكرامة. 
This is the fulfillment of Balaam's own words about those who try to curse Israel being cursed. هي تتميم لكلمات بلعم الشخصية إنه الرب يلعن من يحاول لعن شعب السري أو شعبه. He's told the Lord has held you back from honor. هو قال له كده الرب منعك عن الكرامة. Balaam replies that God was in control, not him, regardless of what he wanted to do for personal gain. هنا بلعم بيرد وبيقول إنه الرب هو المسيطر على كل شيء وهو ما يقدرش يسيطر على كل شيء بغض النظر عن إذا كان هو هيكسب مكسب شخصي أو لا. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me? If Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord speaks, that will I speak. And now behold, I am going to my people. Come, I will let you know what this people will do to your people in the latter days. فقال بالعام لبلاغ لم أكلم أيضا رسلك الذين أرسلت إليه قائلا ولو أعطني بلاغ من أبيتي في الدو ذهبا لا أقدر أن أتجاوز قول الرب الأعمل خيرا أو شرا من نفسي الذي يتكلمه الرب إياه وأتكلم والآن هو ذا أنا منطلق إلى شعبي هل هم أنبئك بما فعله هذا الشعب شعبك في آخر الأيام As before, Balaam continues to honor himself as someone special who can see into the future with God, not honoring God alone. مرة تانية بالعام عايز يقول إنه إن هو عايز يكلم نفسه ويدي نفسه شكل كويس كشخص يعني مميز ويقدر يشوف المستقبل مش إنه ومش إنه يكلم الله. And he took up his discourse and said. The oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is open, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. ثم نتقى بمثل هو قال وحي بلعام ابن بعور وحي رجل مرسوح العينين وحي الذي يسمع أقوال الله ويعرف معرفة العلي الذي يرى رؤية القدير ساقطا وهو مرسوح العينين and at this point, he speaks God's curses not on Israel, but on those who wish Israel to be cursed. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. Edom shall be dispossessed. Seir also, his enemies, shall be dispossessed. Israel is doing valiantly, and one from Jacob shall exercise dominion and destroy the survivors of cities. أراه ولكن ليس الآن. أبصره ولكن ليس قريبا. يبرز كوكب من يعقوب ويكون قديم من إسرائيل. فيحط من طرفي مؤاب ويملك كل بني الوغي. ويكون أدو ميراثا ويكون سعير أعداءه ميراثا. ويصنع إسرائيل ببأس. ويتسلط الذي من يعقوب ويملك الشارد من المدينة. Then he looked on Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but its end is utter destruction. And he looked on the Kenite and took up his discourse and said, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned when Asher takes you away captive. وعيش كموضوع في صخرة، لكن يكون قائل للدمار حتى متى يستأثرك أشور. And he took up his discourse and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But Shif shall come from Kitten and shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he too shall come to utter destruction. Then Balaam rose and went back to his place, and Balak also went his way. ثم نطق المسري وقال اه من يعيش حين يفعل ذلك وتاتي سفن من ناحيه كتيم وتخضع اشور وتخضع عابر فهو ايضا الى الهلاك ثم قام بالعام وانطلق من ورجع الى مكانه وبلغ ايضا ذهب في طريقه But this is not the last we see of Balaam in the Bible or even in Numbers as we'll read about in just a bit. ودي مش اخر حته يظهر فيها بالعام في الكتاب المقدس وحتى في سفر العدد هنشوف تاني هيظهر مره تانية. So our question about Balaam, is he a prophet or a soothsayer? Here are our choices. A prophet is someone who accurately proclaims the will of God. 
A soothsayer is someone who claims to tell the future by omen, sorcery, or witchcraft. أما العرف فهو شخص يدعي أنه يخبر بالمستقبل وبيفعل ذلك عن طريق التكهن أو الشعوذة أو السحر بدفع الحصول على القوة أو المال. And their motive is power or profit. والهدف بتاعهم أن هم يحصلوا على القوة أو المال. In Deuteronomy, God says, For these nations which you shall dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners, but as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. هنا في التسنية 18 بيقول أن هؤلاء الأمم الذين تخلفهم يسمعون للعائفين والعرفين وأما أنت فلم يسمح لك الرب إلهك هكذا. In Second Peter we see this warning against those who are rebelling against God in Peter's own day. في بطرس الثانية بنشوف كلامه عن الناس اللي هم بيتمردوا على الله. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. فتركوا الطريق المستقيم فضلوا تابعين طريق طريق بلعام بن بصور الذي أحب أجرة اسم ولكنه ولكنه حصل على توبيخ تعدي إذ منع حماقة النبي حمار أعجم منطقة بصوت إنسان. Here it describes Balaam as a pathetic type of prophet who is crazy and must be restrained. In other words, not a prophet of God. هنا ب ب بطرس بيتكلم عن بلعام إن هو شاب نبي زي كأنه مجنون ولازم نبتعد عن عنه وعن طريقه بمعنى آخر هو ما كانش نبي لله. What else does the Bible say about Balaam being a prophet or a soothsayer? According to Joshua chapter 13 verse 22, In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam son of Beor who practiced divination. So here in Joshua 13:22 we see two key facts about Balaam. هنا بنشوف حاجتين عن بلعام. He is called a soothsayer. بنشوف إنه بلعام عرف. Never in the Bible is a prophet of the Lord called a soothsayer. ما فيش أي مكان في المقدس نبي لله بيدعى إن هو عرف. Also, he is put to death in battle by the Israelites. كمان هو اتقتل على يد الإسرائيليين. Apparently, as punishment for his practices. In studying the Bible, it's important to remember that biblical narratives teach implicitly. We are left to decide whether what it's describing is right or wrong. وإحنا القصص اللي بتنقدس بتخلينا إحنا بنفسنا نقرر إيه هو الصح وإيه هو الغلط. Besides these two passages we've looked at in Second Peter and Joshua. زي ما إحنا شوفنا في ال يعني بطرس الثانية وفي يشوع في كمان أماكن تانية بتنقدس بتكلم عن بلعين. Bilaim is mentioned in several other places in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. الحياة هو مذكور في كذا مكان في كل من العهد القديم والجديد. His ministry is further described there. وخدمته أو شغله بيت بيتوضح أكتر في الأجزاء دي. So what does the whole Bible say about Balaam? طب إيه رأي كتاب المقدس ككل عن بلعام؟ In Deuteronomy 23 verses 3 through 5 we read this. في سفر التسنية 23 35 بيقول كده. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord because they did not meet you with bread or with water on the way when you came out of Egypt. And because they hired against you, but I'm the son of Beor from Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. لا يدخل عموني ولا مؤابي في جماعة الرب حتى الجيل العشر لا يدخل منهم أحد في جماعة الرب إلى الأبد من أجل أنهم لم يلاقوكم بالخبز والماء في الطريق عند خروجهم من مصر ولأنهم استأجروا عليك بلعام ابن بعور من فطور أرام النهرية لكي يلعنك ولكن لم يشأ الرب إلهك أن يسمع لبلعام فحول لأجلك الرب إلهك اللعنة إلى بركة لأن الرب إلهك قد أحبه. So here we see the punishment on the Ammonites and the Moabites for hiring Balaam. هنا بنشوف العقاب على الأمونيين والعمونيين عشان هما استأجروا بلعام. 
We also see God's motive for cursing the Ammonites and the Moabites after turning their cursings into blessings for Israel. God's motive is his great love for his people. In Joshua chapter 24, not verses 9 through 10, we read how God was unaffected by Balaam. Then Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel, and he sent and invited Balaam the son of Beor to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Instead, he blessed you, so I delivered you out of his hand. This is a reminder that God protected the Israelites from Balaam's intention to curse them. It also confirms the account we've gotten in Numbers. And here in Nehemiah, we learn that Nehemiah and the Israelites are reminded in Scripture of the restriction against Ammonites and Moabites entering the tabernacle. This is the same thing that God spoke through Balaam. On that day, they read from the book of Moses in the hearing of the people, and in it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever enter the assembly of God, for they did not meet the people of Israel with bread and water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. Yet our God turned the curse into a blessing. ووجد مكتوبا فيه أن عمونيا ومؤابيا لا يدخل في جماعة الله إلى الأبد لأنهم لم يلاقوا بني إسرائيل بخبز والماء بل استأجروا عليهم بالعام لكي يلعنهم وحول إلى هنا اللعنة إلى برقة In Jude verses 10 through 11 remember Jude is a one chapter book so in verses 10 through 11 we learn about Balaam's creed كمان في سفر يهوزة أو لذلك يهوزة وهو عبارة عن إصحة واحد but these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. <coughs> As John is writing to the church in Pergamum, he rebukes them for following in the ways of Balaam, who taught Balak, and even generations later, the believers are still learning his corrupt ways. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. It's safe to conclude from internal evidence as well as other references that Balaam was not a prophet of the Lord. هو بالنسبة لنا دلوقتي بعد ما قرنا كل الحاجات دي نقدر نستخلص بشكل واسق يعني من كل الأدلة الداخلية اللي عندنا إنه كمان من الأدلة الأخرى يعني إنه بالعام ما كانش نبي للرب لكن وحتى ما كانش نبي ضل الطريق لكنه كان خادم للعدو He was not even a prophet gone bad وحتى ما كانش بالعام نبي ضل الطريق Instead, he was a servant of the enemy. 
What he practiced was an abomination to the Lord. His end should also reveal where he stood in God's eyes. As he was slain along with the Midianites. So the big picture of this historical account shows four things. The first is that God as the sovereign one using Satan's agent to speak blessings to Israel. Even Balaam acknowledges that he can't help but speak God's word. In applying this to our lives today, we should be careful not to disqualify anyone God may use to bless us. And we should also not disqualify ourselves in being a blessing to others. Even at those times when our motives and our approach are wrong. Secondly, we see in this account from Numbers that God cannot be stopped from turning curses into blessings. We can apply this in our own lives by realizing that even when it seems that nothing in our lives can go right, it's not too late to transform any of those situations into a blessing. Third, magic has no power over God's people. If we placed our faith in Jesus Christ, we are God's people. Because we are God's people, we have no need to fear magic. We have no need to fear witchcraft. And we have no need to fear the supernatural. If God is for us, who can be against us? In spiritual warfare, Jesus is sovereign. Even if bad things happen to us, God will give us peace to deal with them. Fourth, the Lord is the victor over all of the pagan gods. Like the encounter with Pharaoh, the Lord demonstrates that he alone is God. This incident with Balaam is another declaration of God's greatness. He shows his power to the children of Israel as they stand at the edge of the promised land. We can apply this by resting in the fact that if God is for us, no other power can come against us. Knowing this, we can trust God and be at peace. So we need to remember one thing above all. God is in control and he is all powerful. Thank you for being with us today to learn about Balaam, Balak, and how their place in biblical history can teach us today. Please join us next time when we get some food for thought about the feast in the book of Numbers. And we'll also learn why they're important.